KDP colouring books are very popular and sell incredibly well on Amazon. So today I'm going to show you how to create a KDP colouring book interior for mothers and in particular for Mother's Day. And I'm going to try and break this down into some very straightforward steps so you can create a page and then put that all together into the PDF which is then ready to upload to the KDP platform. So what are you waiting for? Let's get straight onto it. Now Mother's Day in the US, which is the biggest market, is on May the 8th this year. And if we go over to Amazon and have a look at some examples, we can see that the covers are very bright. If we take a look inside, we can see that we've got this initial page here, which is just a quote. But if we have a look at what the interior pages look like, we can see that they're basically composed of a background image and on top of that, a quote. So the three components we're going to be looking at is the blank page, background pattern and the foreground image or quote. Now, the software we're going to be using today is what's called vector editing software. It's where you edit uh, lines and shapes rather than pixels. So unfortunately, what I'm going to show you today, you can't really do in Canva. The software that you can use that I recommend to do this sort of work in is Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, which is what I'm going to be using today. And it usually costs, it's around 50 to $60 as a one-off payment. It's not a subscription. However, if you're wanting free options, then I recommend something like Inkscape or the basic version of Gravit Designer. There are other options out there which I've tried, but they didn't seem to work as well for what we're going to do today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is to set up our page. So we need the correct page size. Now this is going to be an 8.5 by 11 inch book, which is the most common size of coloring book on Amazon. Now the pattern, the background pattern is going to go right to the edge of the page. So this page is going to have bleed. So we need to add on an extra amount to our page size for that. So our page size is actually going to be 8.625 by 11.25. So whatever software you're in, just go along, click on file, click on new, and you'll open up a dialog page similar to this. So I put in here 8.625 as the width, 11.25 as the height. The color profile says sRGB, which actually doesn't really matter because we're, we're going to be creating black and white interior pages. But we click on create and create our blank page. Now when we're creating our page, we're going to have our background and on top of that, our image, or in this case, quote. I like quotes because they're very easy to find and very easy to use to create coloring book interiors and they're extremely popular. Now, with our main content in the middle of the page, this has to be in what we call margins. Now, these are borders around the edge of the page. If our image or quote goes beyond those borders, then there's a risk of it getting cut off and Amazon will then send you a message saying that there's an error with your interior. So what we need to do is go along to Gumroad, to my Gumroad shop. I'll leave a link to it down below. It's free and it sees KDP margin templates here. And when it sends you to the download page, you'll see you've got all these options here for no bleed templates and bleed templates. And these are the ones we want, this 8.625 by 11.25. So just go ahead and click on download, go back to your vector editing software and just drag in that template and just drag the corner down like so. Okay, and as you can see, we've got these pink margin borders here. Now, right hand side, Click on the lock icon just to lock that layer into place. So next, we're going to need our background image. Now, I get most of my images from Creative Fabrica and Vecteezy just because I have accounts there with them. And the, the selection, the range of images they've got is huge. Now, you can get free images on sites like Unsplash and, and Pixabay. The range is smaller, but what you've really got to be careful with on using those sites is that the images are not copyrighted because although it says they're not copyrighted, sometimes they do um, fall through the net and, and get published on those sites. And you have to do things like reverse Google image searches to make sure they are not on these big um, paid for stock photo websites. Now I went over to Creative Fabrica and I just put in patterned background and we've got all these examples here. Now what I make sure to do is click on the print on demand box so that any images that come up, we do know that we can use them in our print on demand products like our books. 
So I've just scrolled down here and we've got quite a few patterns and I'm going to pick this mandala pattern. And again, it says commercial and full print on demand usage allowed. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that. Now, when you are looking at images, you want to be looking in the description to look at what file types are available. And the file types we can use in our software are .ai, .svg and .eps files. Okay, so I've downloaded that. I'm just going to drag it across into Affinity Designer. And here you can see our Mandela pattern. So now I'm just going to put what we call a bounding box. So that's left click on the mouse and just drag. That'll put a box around our pattern. Command C, Control C to copy. Then I'm gonna to go to our blank page and Command V or Control V to paste. We can drag that into position. Now I'm just going to reduce the size of that paste slightly and holding down the Shift key, I'm just going to drag in one corner and just enlarge that ever so slightly. We can adjust this once we've got our quote in place. Now you can see these lines are quite thin. So go to the top right and click on the stroke tab. You can see here we've got this width slider and we can control the width of the lines on our page. So we want them nice and clear, easy to color in. Now what we need next is our foreground image which as I mentioned, we're going to be using a quote today. You could use any sort of image that you wanted to do. Now again, I'm at Creative Fabrica because the selection here of things like quotes for any sort of niche is huge. So the sort of search terms to find these that you can use in the search box are mom or mother's SVG bundle or mother's quote bundle. Again, click on print the print on demand box and you'll see we've got pages and pages of these options here. So I'm going to choose this here, click on download. Then I'm going to go back to Affinity Designer, choose one of the quotes in, as I've mentioned, .ai, .svg or .eps format, whatever you have. Here we've got the .svg format and I'm just going to drag that into Affinity Designer. So again, left click on the mouse, just drag to put a bounding box around all these components. Command C, Control C to copy. Go to our page, Command V or Control V to paste. Now we need to re hold down the left shift key and reduce the size of that and put it somewhere in the middle of the page. You can see in the layers panel, we've got all these components to this quote here. So just click, click on Command G or Control G to group all those together. Now we're going to rename these. So I'm going to just click on our quote and call that quote. I'm going to click on our pattern background layer and call it background. Now I'm just gonna click on this tick box here to make our background invisible for the moment. Now you'll see our quote here, we can move around. And as I said, it's got to be within these pink borders. Now I'm gonna click on shift and just to reduce the size of that slightly. So what we need to do next is this. The top right, we go to our color. And we've got the options here to change the color of the stroke and change the color of the fill. The fill is the color inside our lines and the stroke is the actual color of the lines. So we want to click on our fill button and using the sliders here, we've got hue, saturation, luminance sliders. We're just going to move the luminance over to white. Now you can see it disappears there. Go over to our layers panel, right click on our quote and click on duplicate and then rename that bottom layer that we just created and call it shadow. Now make sure that the shadow layer is highlighted there. Then go over to our color tab click on the stroke button this time and move the slider over to black. Then click on the stroke tab. Now what we can do is increase the width of our stroke on that image. And you can see here, our quote now becomes visible with this black background, which makes it stand out. Then holding down shift, click on the quote layer in the quote layers panel. So now you've got the two layers highlighted and click on command G or control G to group those together. So now we can turn our template off. So go to the layers panel, click on the template layer and just click on the tick box to make it disappear. And now with our background, just click on the background layer and click on the tick box. And you'll see here that our background is now visible. And again, using the stroke, we can change the width of the stroke on our background and you can move it so that it's in keeping with the quote that you've just created. And I like that it looks pretty good. 
Now this is one of our pages and this we'll need to put together with other pages to create our PDF file. And we're going to do that in Keynote today. Now you can do exactly what I'm going to show you also on PowerPoint. I like using these pieces of software because um, they're very straightforward to use, very difficult to, to make any errors. So what we need to do first of all with our page is go to File, click on Export. I'm going to export this as a PNG, call this Page 1, and just save to somewhere on your computer. So next we're going to go to Keynote. Now I've set this as a custom size of 621 points by 810 points, which is the equivalent of 8.625 by 11 inches. On PowerPoint, you can actually set the dimensions of the page um, in inches. Now we've got our blank page here set up on Keynote. Left hand side, click on, just highlight that page, click on Command C or Control C to copy and then Command V or Control V to paste. And now you need to paste in the number of pages you want in your book. Here, we're going to have 60 pages, but that can be whatever you choose. Now, the first page, as we saw in that coloring book earlier on Amazon, just had a blank quote on there. So from those quotes that you downloaded, you could actually just drag something in there for the first page and move that to the center. Now I'd leave the second page blank, and then we'll go to the third page in the book, which is the, the right-hand side page and that PNG we've just created on Affinity Designer or in Affinity Designer, we can just drag that into place. So that's the first page of our coloring book. Again, the page behind that I would leave blank um, because often, uh, sometimes depending on the type of pens, you can get some bleed through the page. So it would take us on to the fifth page. Now I'll quickly show you about creating another coloring page. So we go to new blank page. Now this time I'm going to use a background pattern from Vecteasy. Now the reason I like this is because if you go to vectors, put in Zentangle, you get page after page of all these excellent looking patterns. And in particular, I like these ones from Kuntal Pamar. And if you click on his profile, you can see he's got page after page of all these different patterns. So you could go ahead and download. Now if you don't have an account here on Vecteasy, um, there are free images that you can use, but you can only sell 50, I think, well, it used to be, I think it's still the same, 50 books um, with the free images. So you'd have to be careful there. What I sometimes suggest is that, okay, if you do that, then once you've sold 50, use the money you make from that to invest in a pro account. And you can see here, it says pro in the top left-hand corner, which means you can only do this with the paid account. So go ahead and download that image, go back to our blank page, drag the vector image. In this case, it's a .eps image into Affinity Designer, Command C or Control C to copy. Go to our blank page, Command V or Control V to paste. We'll reduce the size of that because we just want to drag it across. We've got the color part of the image there. But if we drag across, just going to increase the width of the stroke here. We can see we've got our black and white patterned image there. And you can position this however you like. Now, right hand side layers panel, I'm just going to click that tick box to make it invisible. I'm going to drag across the template like we did before, drag that into place. Then I'm going to drag across vector image. This time it says Happy Mother's Day. Bounding box around all of that. Command C, Control C to copy. Command C or Control V to paste. Holding down shift, we can reduce the size of that, drag it into position now actually. And what I'm going to do is just elongate that ever so slightly. It won't detract from the image, but we'll just fill up more of the page. Command G to group all those together. Next, go to color, click on fill, move the slider to white, call that layer quote, right click, duplicate the layer, call this shadow, keeping the shadow layer highlighted, click on the stroke button, move the slider to black, go to the stroke tab, increase the stroke width until it turns out looking good. Highlight both those layers, the quote and the shadow, command G to group them together. Then our template, we can just untick to make invisible. And then our pattern background, just tick the box to make that visible. Now you can change the size of that background if you like, holding down shift and just dragging. And there we have our next page, go to file, export png whole document export and we'll call this page two save to downloads go back to keynote make sure 
page five is highlighted in Keynote or PowerPoint and just drag that across. And then after that, the next page we go on to is page seven because we'd leave page six as blank. And you can see how you would build up this interior on Keynote to create all your coloring book pages. So the next thing we need to do is download this as a PDF. So back into Keynote or PowerPoint, click on File, click on Export To, and click on PDF. I usually use Image Quality Best. Click on Next, and I just call this something like Coloring Book Interior. Download that. And if I just open that file, you can see we have our PDF file now with our first page, with our page three, blank page, page five and so on. And obviously all these other pages will be filled with content. So that's the PDF interior created, which is then ready to upload to the KDP platform. But what you're gonna need next is also the coloring book cover, which I'm gonna show you how to create in the next video, which is a follow on video to this. And I'm gonna leave a link to that video down below in the description, and I'll leave a link to it here. It's gonna be a colorful, vibrant cover that gets customers attention. Thank you very much for your time. It's very much appreciated. And until next time, goodbye.